right now. Ten seconds. Well, threaten me with a good time. Hello. Is it me you're looking for? Uh oh, are we live? Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> yeah. It's almost eight o'clock. We'll start right at eight. I'm not getting it. Oh yeah, we're good. <laughs> we are good. All right, stick. Good morning. It's eight a.m. It's eight a.m., buddy. It's eight a.m. Let's do this. Welcome. My name is Stick. This is Woodward Sports. It is Monday morning after a Lions victory. Woo! Woo! Man, can we can we just enjoy this moment for a second? It, this hasn't happened often in the past three years. Oh yeah. And not only did we win, we dominated That's that right. game. Like from the first kickoff. So they finally ended the game 0 0 0 0 on the clock. The mm. Lions dominated the Jags, and I slept like a fucking baby. God damn it. How good did that feel? <laughs> Dude, it felt amazing to wake up like this. Um, I feel like Beyonce. I woke yeah. up like this. I'm like, just fabulous. I you know, it. I almost shaved the mustache last night because of Minshew. Like, I, I didn't want, you know, I didn't want to carry on the tradition because he sucked so bad yesterday. And I'm pretty disappointed in what happened with Gardner Minshew yesterday. I wasn't. You, I wasn't you, surprised. You expected that. Well, not against Detroit, but I just don't <laughs> think he's a franchise quarterback. But that's a different discussion. I honestly, I've fallen in love with the majesty of Gardner the Minshew. Mustache. The mustache, uh, the very, swag. It's very the dude works out in the locker it's room and just romantic. a jock strap. I mean, he's the kind of guy you want your locker room mm. to kind of spice things up. Yeah. But after watching him throw countless passes behind his wide receivers yesterday i'm like all right this guy's yeah. not elite well how about we get into it let's start with the lions yeah the yeah Jackson's what do i do with talking about gardner Minshew? who cares let's talk about the lions they did uh great things yesterday they did. and the first great thing they did was feed the ball to their rookie damn right they did <laughs> deandre swift uh actually he set not not he set a record, but he is the first Lions rookie since Barry Sanders to run for over a hundred yards and have two touchdowns in the same game. The first not one. Not bad. I wasn't alive when that happened. In nineteen eighty nine, you were not alive. No, I was five years from being made. <laughs> <laughs> so you've never seen a Lions rookie running back come through and have a no, game like that. I think that. the closest thing I've ever seen was Kevin Jones against Arizona, but he didn't exactly put up that stat line. I, I think he got a hundred yards, but not two touchdowns. Yeah, Kevin Jones had a hundred yard game as a rookie. Um, who else? Uh, Javid Best had a big game as a rookie too. <laughs> Uh, I think Concussion, it was against man. the Bears, but it wasn't. I don't remember. It but, wasn't anything like this. No, I mean, the way they use DeAndre Swift is exactly how we should be using DeAndre Swift, and I even think we should get him more balls out of the backfield. But like I said, 116 yards, two touchdowns, and what I love about the Lions' game plan yesterday: they ran the ball 39 times, they threw it 31. I know. When's the last time we've done that? I don't know. We should probably look that up. Yeah, come on, stat boy. Look it up. <laughs> but for real, uh, that is the way the Lions, that is the recipe for them to win. Uh, I just put up an article on woodwardsports.com about Matthew Stafford, mm -hmm. and we can all agree Matthew Stafford is the greatest Lions quarterback of all time, right? Mm -hmm. But he's at the stage of his career to where – he can't be the guy, game in, game out, every single play. We need to support him like we did yesterday against the Jags. And that includes a little bit of Adrian Peterson, a whole lot of DeAndre Swift, and a little bit of carry on Johnson. And that's the recipe for the Lions to win moving forward. That's I what think. it looks like. But Matthew Stafford, game manager, doesn't, doesn't click with me, man. Really? I mean... He's never been a game manager. Yeah, I know we've asked him to do a lot. Not that it's he's done much, but I don't know. I don't. I don't think that sounds right. <laughs> but defense deserves credit. Yesterday they did very well. But maybe we've just misused Stafford all these years. Like we just thought, oh, this guy's got a rocket he's got arm. He's an elite talent. Like he's gonna be our best quarterback ever. Let's just throw everything on him. Forget the running game. Forget all that. Like, we got Matthew Stafford, and maybe we've just been misusing him for a decade. 
Well, yesterday was very interesting. The interception was very whack. I don't. I mean, that's Stafford though. He was. He was. It was an inaccurate game for him, but I mean. But that's Stafford's uh, career, honestly, in a nutshell. Is he has all the talent, but he just every once in a while he'll make those decisions that you're just like, what, what the, the fuck are you doing, man? Yeah. Like that interception really could have changed the tide of the game. If yeah. Jacksonville was any semblance of a real team, yeah. they should have taken that ball, scored, made it what? It would have been seven. Yeah, the score line. 10. The score line was much friendlier than what could have been. Yeah, I mean, the field position we gave them, especially after that. 57 yard field goal attempt. I mean, what do you think about that call? I heard a lot of people bitching about it. I don't mind being aggressive. You got Matthew Prater. Yeah, yeah, I love him. I think he's one of the best kickers in the league, probably one of the best all time. The problem is we did this against the Bears. I mean, learn your lesson, pin him down within the 10 yard line. We have a very good punter. Lo <sighs> Logically, it's the right move. I don't mind Prater making it. If I mean, kicking it. If he makes it, no one's saying anything today. Right. But he's. 0 of 2 now, 0 for 3 this year. Yeah, on 50 it's actually hurting his percentage. Yeah, like he's he no was longer the the leader in the NFL. He was leading the NFL in field goals over 50 yards, the percentage of making it. But now he's missed his last two. So now uh, yeah. I forget who he's below, but he's number two in NFL history. So he's got to get that leg back together so he can move up, man. Yeah. That, that's the big thing. Well, I think it's good to have a kicker <laughs> yeah, look at great. the jacksonville they didn't they didn't trust Dude, that the was like their fifth kicker this year and that he kid never was just played. a soccer player, yeah, he was a soccer player. <laughs> <laughs> so if anybody wants to kick in the nfl i believe jacksonville's having tryouts today if you want to drive your ass down there because apparently they'll let anybody kick in jacksonville yeah. and that kid was not great it actually caused them to kind of switch up their game plan because mm -hmm. after he missed his second field goal they were like well we're just going to go for it every fourth down now because our kicker sucks. Um, so I made some predictions in the pregame. Right. And I made some predictions going into uh, the weekend. And let's let's see. Adam, you got a list of where I, I was right and, and where, you where were I wrong. was wrong. Well, let's start with where you were right. Yeah, let's start with where I was right. right. I think that's a good yeah, place to start. I think you start. deserve an ego boost yeah. after this call. DeAndre Swift. He was a must-start on your fantasy article this week. That's right. That's right. And why was he a must-start? Because I knew Jacksonville, they were letting up the most uh, yards per run. 29th in the NFL. They're 29th in the NFL. And it was just time. You yeah. know, I, I just felt like it was time. He didn't get his preseason. So the first two games, let's give him, let's call those DeAndre Swift's preseason games. Mm -hmm. Since then, the guy has been out of control. The way he played against the Saints was amazing. I loved him catching the ball out of the backfield. And then yesterday, he showed that he can run between the tackles and just mm -hmm. pound the damn ball. Man, our offensive line yesterday looked great. Yeah. God, those holes are great. Yeah, Ragnow, it was good to have you back. I'm glad you made it through your yeah. injury. Uh, let's see. Where, give me one where I was wrong. Where you were wrong. Yes. He told everybody at home to pick Golden Tate this week. Ugh. He didn't even get two points. He did not get two fantasy <laughs> points. The philosophy, I thought, was strong behind picking Golden Tate. All right? Um, you got the Giants. They're going up against the shitty Washington football team, which, by the way, whenever you see that on the scoreboard, it's hilarious. It's like Giants, Cowboys, football, football team. team. <laughs> like, <laughs> I will never get used to that. But I seriously thought Golden Tate would get a lot of checkdowns and catch a lot of those five-yard balls. It turns out he caught one pass. So if you trusted me on my sit em start -em with DeAndre Swift, you were very happy if you went all in. And I did say that was a stretch pick, though, like when I was going over it. I, I did preface, like, this is my reach, and it, it just did not all work right, out. Right. So let's... hopefully, hopefully you did not start Golden Tate. All right, let's make it where you were right. Let's see. You told, you told everyone the Lions would win by two touchdowns at least so hopefully you took my advice to the bank they were only three point favorites against jacksonville i like, think vegas learned their lesson though they had the detroit within a, a touchdown the last two weeks and they got their asses kicked vegas the insulted the lions with that line that that is insult three points against jacksonville i mean i know it's on the road so you tack on another three so traditionally it's six points uh, with the yeah. way vegas thinks but jesus three points like the, the Lions could play that team a hundred times and win by double digits a hundred times. You don't think so? I think we're drinking too much Kool-Aid today. What? <laughs> I think we're so excited. 
I don't know. No, I listen in my post game. If yeah. you go back and watch it on our Facebook page, I said I get it. It's the Jacksonville Jaguars. We're supposed to beat them, but the way we beat them is oh, yeah. what I'm excited oh, about. Yeah. Like this is what we're a, supposed to do. Exactly. This is what good teams are supposed to do Against to bad teams. Bad teams. Yeah. You step on their neck and you keep kicking the shit out of mm-hmm. them. What we haven't been in the past, like we dick around with these teams mm-hmm. and let them stick around for the game. And, and then we t- got to play an amazing fourth quarter. Or Stafford may throw a ball that gets tipped. They return it for a touchdown. And next thing you know, we lose to the goddamn Jags. Yeah. So that did not happen this week. And yeah. that's what I'm excited about with the Lions. Not only that they won, but how they won. Well, let's keep talking about how right you were. Yeah, let's keep it. I like this. The over under for the Jacksonville Jaguars and Detroit Lions game was 54 and a half. Wow. You chose the under. The, damn right I chose the damn under. Damn right. It was under. It was under. <laughs> and that was actually a tough decision because I kept going back in my head that is this going to be a shootout? Is this not going to be a shootout? You know, that's what I was really hoping for yeah. because I you know, full disclosure, I started Gardner Minshew in my dynasty league because Dak broke his ankle last week. Uh, Drew Brees was on a bye, so I went with Minshew. Uh, so I was I was rooting for Minshew to have a decent game. He he did okay, but I was really hoping for a shootout like 45 to like 35 Lions. We didn't get it, but the Lions got their end, so yeah. I, I was happy about that. Well, speaking of Minshew, let's talk about where you were wrong. Uh, no! You predicted <laughs> Gardner Minshew would throw 300 yards <laughs> and have two touchdowns. Why are you laughing at me, man? Coming into this Bro. game, Gardner Minshew was the number 12 quarterback oh. in fantasy football. Yeah. He, like, every game he gets about 300 yards and two touchdowns, but now I see they're, like, fourth quarter comeback yards, and they're not, yeah, like... They're Kirk Cousins yards. Yeah, they're not in-game yards, <laughs> you know? It's <laughs> like, oh, shit, at the end of the game, we picked up 80 on this two-minute drill, and, mm-hmm. you know... But speaking of Minshew, yes. you were right about one thing this weekend with Minshew. Tell me why I was right, Adam! You were right that he would get a rushing touchdown. Ah, see... This is the thing, and you can expect to see this many weeks with the Detroit Lions until they switch up their strictly man uh, defense, which they kind of did this week. Mm -hmm. They kind of switched up. Yep. They put pressure on the quarterback. Trey Flowers, good to see you show up. Thank you, sir. Um, But anytime you run man, and you heard the commentators actually mention this, and I I mentioned it in the pregame, but anytime you run man, what's going to happen is those DBs are going to have their backs turned to the quarterback while they're chasing the receivers down the field. And if any good quarterback sees the middle clear out and the DB's backs facing them, they're going to take off for at least 5, 10 yards. And what Stafford, happened? Stafford had a really good run. Stafford had a great – dude, when's the last time we saw a run like that out of mm-hmm. Matthew Stafford? Mm-hmm. Uh, but either way, whenever you face man defense like that, expect quarterbacks to have big games. And that's what happened kind of on both sides. And that's kind of what I said in the pregame, too, is that Stafford and Minshew, like, these teams kind of mirror each other, mm-hmm. and their stats kind of mirrored each other yesterday, too. Yeah. All right. Well, in other news. <laughs> in other news. We got a World Dodgers, Series, baby. The Dodgers came back from a 3-1 deficit. I love that. That was amazing. I love that story. And I'm so happy Tampa Bay didn't oh, choke yeah. it. Oh, my God. That yeah. would have been the biggest fuck you in baseball history. Yeah, no, I'm happy the Astros lost, even though, like, I don't take them cheating as hard as everybody else. Yeah. Like, to me, sign stealing has been a part of baseball since the invention of baseball. These guys just kind of upped it with the technology. So as much as people want to bitch about the Astros cheating, dude, people have cheated forever in baseball. These guys just got caught, and that's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> But forget about the Astros. They're not going to the World Series. Mm -hmm. We got Tampa Bay and the team that locked it down last night, the Dodgers. uh, Bellinger with that, what was it? Seventh seventh inning. Yep. Beautiful home run. Oh, my God. God, His strut down first base. So good to see. How arrogant, though, man. I'm surprised that, like, next season he's going to catch one to the fucking head for doing that. Yeah, but who cares? They're in the World Series. I know, man. He knew it was over because the pitching was really good that game. Nobody could really get anything going. Have you ever had that moment in your life where you've, like, been able to take that 20-foot strut? Like, you just know you absolutely destroyed something. Like, not just in baseball. In (laughs) softball. In in softball, for sure. The thing I hate about softball is when you hit a home run, they don't even let you run around the bases. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like, Mm -hmm. at least in the league I play in. Like, you hit the home run and then you just walk to your dugout. Yeah. I want to trot around the bases. Yeah. That's why I'm playing softball. Like, I haven't hit a home run since, since Little school. League, right? Uh, and I finally get a hold of one, and they're just like, all right, stick. You know, just, yeah. just walk to the dugout. <laughs> no, I want to trot that shit. I want to carry my bat around the bases. 
Like, that's how softball should be. They should let you carry it around the bases, mm-hmm. but then the games would take four hours. Yeah. Uh, but either way, if you didn't know this, a fun fact about the Dodgers, Clayton Kershaw played baseball with Matthew Stafford. Have you ever heard that? Uh, I think I'm so tired of hearing that. <laughs> we hear that every freaking week on every single game. That's why we paid him game. his contract. That's yeah. why we gave him that long-term deal. I wonder if Stafford's going to go to the World Series, though, to support his homie. He should. He should. I would. If yeah. any of my homies ever made it to the World Series, know that I will be there for you. Mm-hmm. Like, I'll be right behind home plate if you want me to. That's yeah. I'll make that sacrifice for anybody that makes mm-hmm. the World Series. What will you do if the Lions make the Super Bowl? Can we not do that? <laughs> no. What would you do, Adam? <laughs> what would I do? I would do everything to go there, for sure. I'd go there naked. Shit. <laughs> uh, I mean, there's just, I don't know. I we'll always see. tell people I would burn my own car. You would burn your own car? Yeah. You know Why? how, like, when riots happen, when teams oh. go to the Super Bowl and everything. Oh, if we're cool. doing that, then I'll burn down my house. Yeah, I will, I will literally walk into my driveway and burn my own car if the Lions okay. ever make it to the Super Bowl. That is my I'll promise join you. to you, Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, I will be so excited. Uh, all so right. we got our World Series mm-hmm. matchup. We got the Dodgers, and we got um, Tampa Bay. Mm-hmm. If Tampa Bay wins it in hockey... And they win it in baseball. It's a good season for Tampa Bay. Well, and their football team, Tom Brady, looked ridiculous. That mm. defense looked amazing yeah. yesterday. Tom Brady looked efficient, if that's the word. The defense that's looked Tom really Brady. good. Tom but, Brady looked yeah. Tom Brady. Then. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I thought the defense really carried their weight yesterday. Did but. you see Sue getting yeah. Rodgers' ass a little bit? Man. I love that. I miss Indomitian and Sue in a Detroit Lions jersey, man. I miss that type of attitude that on attitude our defense. attitude he brought. Yeah. I mean, it ca- Fucked us so many times, but, <laughs> man, it was great. You take the good, you take the yeah, bad, yeah, man. We had the sure. number two defense in the league with we that, did, dude. So I will take a couple stomps on uh, Green Bay Packers mm-hmm. to have the number two defense in the league. But just mm-hmm. when he had that free shot on Rodgers yesterday <laughs> and he just shoved him to the ground with all his might, Rodgers just got up like, what are you doing, bro? Like, I'm Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, You're not yeah. allowed to touch me. Mm-hmm. And they just started jawing at each other. I, I missed that. We need some of that on Detroit. Who yeah. who do you think our me- meanest player right now is? Adrian Peterson. Probably. That's, that's fair. He yeah. plays angry. He plays angry. He plays I, angry. It has to be Adrian Peterson yeah. for me. I mean, yeah. defensive side of the ball, I don't. I don't think we have any of those killers, man. That's a really good Trey question. Trey Flowers had some good hits yesterday. Trey Flowers, even Jamie Collins. I yeah, mean, he had a good game yesterday. You gotta yeah. give him that. But. The, Lions, the Lions look good yesterday in yeah. all facets. Yeah. Um, well, let's move on to Monday Night Football. On, uh, can they see this guy walking by? I hope they can hear this guy with the leaf blower right behind you. He's come. Uh, he's about to come by on your well, camera. Well, they can't see me. The well, thing is, can... we're right on Woodward. That's why we're Woodward Sports. Like literally, right behind Adam is Woodward. We're at 15 Mile in Woodward right now in Birmingham. This is our studios. Uh, so Adam is literally right on Woodward. We get people walking by, looking in here all the time. This guy's behind him with a blower right now. <laughs> Hopefully you can hear it. Thanks, fella. You sound great. Uh, <laughs> let's get into Monday Night Football, Adam. I got some stake in the games tonight. Do you? Yeah, in my fantasy football league, I'm up by 30 points. Okay. But he's got Josh Allen. Okay. And I got Amari Cooper. Should be in the back. That's what, uh, that's, what, uh, yeah. that's what you said earlier, but then I showed you the points. And, like Josh Allen has put up almost 40 points a game. So I need Amari Cooper to have like 15, 20 points if Josh Allen has his normal game. So yeah. that's what I need tonight. But Kansas City and Buffalo is playing at 5 p.m. I know. How weird is that? I'm so excited. I got Patrick Mahomes going in that game. Do and you? I got Stephon Diggs. I'm so down by 30. Who do you think is going to win that game? Um... That's a good question. I know it's a good question. That's why I asked it. <laughs> All right, I'd say the Chiefs. Put some I'd say the Chiefs. <laughs> the no, Chiefs. no, I'd say the Chiefs. I think that's uh, undefeated Bills. That's where they lose. You think this is it? Yeah, I think Chiefs show their Super Bowl. Kind I'm of interested strut. to see what the Chiefs defense does with Josh Allen. That's that's what I'm interested to see because we always talk about the Chiefs uh, offense. We know they're prolific. We know they have crazy. a very good defense. They have a very they, good. They defense. balled out. They balled out last week. Yeah. So I, I want to see that defense again. Like, I want to. Uh, well, I think you want to see that because you're going against Josh Allen. <laughs> <laughs> Selfishly, I want to see it. Yeah, if, if I didn't have any stake in this game, I'd want to see it be like 70 to 72. Yeah. Like, yeah. But not today. No, yeah. I want to see 
I want to see the Bills come back to earth. I want to yeah. see Josh Allen look human. Yeah. He looked a little bit human last game. Um, and I just I don't want to see him blow up tonight because I don't want to lose in my fantasy football league. I'll be 5-1 and one if I win tonight. If I told you that he throws three touchdowns but finishes with under 30 points. Oh, yeah, I'll take it all day. All right, all right. Anything under 30 so let's, points. So let's, let's aim for a 30-28 scoreline. That's my call. That's your call, 30-28? Yeah. Yeah. I got Kansas the Lions City. game right. You did get the— I didn't win anything for it. Yeah, Adam actually nailed the score of the Lions game if you didn't see it. So <laughs> that that was pretty amazing. How do you feel about that, man? Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> I'll get you a Woodward Sports t-shirt. Awesome. Uh, so, yeah, Kansas City-Buffalo tonight. I, I like Kansas City, too, mm-hmm. just because on both sides of the ball, how good they are. Yeah. Um, Buffalo, I do love their defense. I, I like their offense. I don't. That's love, the matchup tonight. Yeah. How does the Buffalo defense stack up against Kansas City? Yeah, and I like their defense. I just yeah, don't very love good. their offense. Yeah, I mean, people were laughing at them, what, two years ago when they – Got Josh Allen. Like, yeah. what is this guy going to do with that defense? What a waste. And uh, nope. And look at Sam Darnold now. Look at Sam Darnold now. <laughs> and who else was in that draft class? Uh, I don't know, but the that Jets are Baker awful. Mayfields. If you want to talk about the Jets, God, they're horrible. Dude, that was one of the worst games of football I've ever, ever watched. But ever. I had to watch it because I was going up against Miles Gaskin, yeah. uh, Gasecki, and mm-hmm. their kicker. So I They was made like, the Dolphins and, look like playoff contenders yeah the oh, Dolph- did you see Tua play Tua, yeah let's big, talk about big ovation Tua. big standing ovation i wish they would have put him in with nine minutes to go so we would have gotten at least some real game time action then putting him in with two minutes to go wasn't yeah. really the best but we got to see Tua make two throws and then did you see the picture after the game yeah sitting down by himself oh field. my god how do you not love this guy man so if you didn't see it we'll post it up on woodward sports facebook page and on our instagram i think we got to give some love though to brian flores oh Hold on, let's let's talk about Tua. Let's let's think about Tua and oh what it looked God. like if he was wearing a Lions uniform right now. He would be hurt right now. And he would have gotten in this past game against Jacksonville and he probably would have gone hurt. No, 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 no. Look, come on, we're being romantic about Tua right now. So Tua he he's in a Lions uniform, he's wearing the Honolulu blue. The Lions are up on Jacksonville. He gets in the game with two minutes left. He completes two passes mm. just like he did yesterday. Mm. And then after the game, what does Tua do? He walks back out on the field by himself mm. to reflect yeah. that a year ago yeah. he couldn't even play football. Now he's playing in the NFL, Adam. And then Matt Patricia runs out to the field and tells him, stay with the team. <laughs> what, <laughs> what are you doing? But what a great moment for Tua, and what an awesome picture. Mm-hmm. It's Tua sitting in a completely empty stadium. Dude is literally sitting about the 50-yard yeah. line, just like any of us did after our last high school football yeah. game. You know, you always go back to that field and you sit there. You're like, oh, man, there's some memories here. Two is sitting on the field like, oh, shit. Like, I'm actually going to be able to do this and do it well because he looked good. I mean, he only threw the ball two times, but one was on a rollout. I didn't think he could get the ball out at all. He did right on target to his receiver. So I'm becoming a heartfelt Tua fan. I don't like attaching my heart to uh, many NFL players, but that gesture last night after the game for him to come out and sit on the field by himself and just kind of reflect on where he was with his crazy hip injury to now it's sort of Alex Smith esque without Alex Smith's career, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I, I love that moment. Yesterday. I'm excited for the dolphins though. Good for them. Yeah. Got they, their franchise quarterback. Yeah. They the got weights. a winner. I mean, they got a coach who is not taking losses like some coaches in the NFL do. <laughs> yep. I mean, it's ridiculous. But and good for them. And he's got a mentor in Fitz Magic too. Yeah. That's gonna get him prepared mm-hmm. for the next step. Well, in what the a NFL. professional he is! Right, and literally could have retired at any point after throwing all those interceptions and taking a beating every Sunday for very bad teams. Yeah, and that's why that's why I really wanted Tua here in Detroit. Like I, I wanted Stafford to mentor him for like two or three years, but we got Okuda. I don't mind Okuda. You know, he hasn't played great yet, but you, you never can, you expect, can't expect that. that from a rookie corner. Yeah, rookie corners never show up like that. That's that's just part of the game plan. And like we just talked about Swift earlier, he didn't have a preseason, so the first two games were kind of his preseason. Yeah. Um, but either way, we have Okuda. They have Tua. I'm happy to see that Tua was on the field. He looked great yesterday. It was just a very touching moment. I love it. You know, I'm, I'm one of those people that 
I miss playing football. Like yeah. I miss waking up and smelling the fall air. Like I miss two a days. I miss lighting kids like Adam up yeah, when they thought yeah. they were fast coming through the hole. <laughs> like, and I think anybody who's ever played the game can associate with what Tua did yesterday. Yeah, for sure. Have you ever Very gone back to your moment. old field, Adam? No. Where, where did you play? You played at Fortson, I, I, right? No, I played at Cres Fortson and Crestwood. And Crestwood. Yeah. Adam was Crestwood. an elite quarterback, yeah. if anybody doesn't know Injury this. Injury-prone quarterback. In <laughs> yeah, that's, that's me, too. Like, go, you got some footage on I YouTube, do. right? Huddle. Huddle. Uh, what's it called? Huddle, right? Is that what it's called? I okay. How do, how do people search your footage, Adam? I don't know. Just search my name. <laughs> Just search yeah. Adam Bayoun. Bayoun. He, he, had a, he had a gun. This kid's got an arm. Like, when we were playing kickball last season... He was the only guy to throw people out from third base playing kickball because he's got a fucking rocket for an arm. Uh, but, yeah, I think anybody who's ever played can associate with what Tua did yesterday, and I just thought it was so awesome of him. Yeah, good for him, especially because just the story in general. Yeah. Getting hurt, ruining your draft stock. Oh. You never know what could have happened. The fact Who's that Miami Joe took Joe Burrow. In. Joe Burrow comes in, just steals your girl. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's literally what happened. Uh, but back to Monday Night Football, we got a second Monday Night Football game, which I love this double dip on Monday night. I'm starting to like it a lot more. Yeah, not so much Tuesday Night Football. Yeah. I don't like Tuesday Night Football. I like having the back-to-back. -back. Right, but the double dip on Monday night, mm -hmm. Dallas and Arizona. Yeah. It's going to be an interesting game. Andy Dalton gets his first full-time start. Mm -hmm. The Dallas defense has been absolute ass going yeah. up against Arizona's offense, which is pretty damn good. Uh, Adam, what do you think, and who do you think is going to have a big game in this one? I've got Kyler Murray absolutely torching <laughs> the Dallas Cowboys. You think so? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. They, I don't think they have a chance. I mean, the over-under is 55 and a half. I'll take the over. Yeah, I'll take the over, too. I, I think Andy Dalton plays a good game. See, I just think the defense is shit. See, I think a lot of people are sleeping on Dalton. Like yeah. Dalton could end up being a top ten fantasy quarterback this year. By I mean, the end look of the at his season. weapons. Oh. CeeDee Lamb, what a pick. Jeez. I mean the Rich get richer, man. Seriously. <laughs> like that's why Jerry Jones was like pooping in his pampers when that came yeah. on, man. Like, could you do you remember the draft yeah, night was, when they got him? They were yeah. like, ah, <laughs> we just yeah. stole the world and yeah. dude's been great they ever nailed it. since. Justin Jefferson, off topic. Oh. Wow. Yes. Minnesota Vikings yep. take a bow. Yes. What a fucking steal. You knew Jefferson was going to be good. And honestly, it, I don't know if it's so much Jefferson. I'll give him credit for his skill set. But he's stepping in in Stefan Diggs' role. So that role was already pretty established that you're going to see a lot of balls. They already Deep had balls. good schemes mm -hmm. written out for you. Mm -hmm. Like, all you had to do is n come in and not fuck up. Run your routes, catch the ball. And Jefferson has come in, and not only has he not fucked up, he yeah. is he's is he better than Diggs? At his age, when they were the same age, right sure. now, today, yeah. today, today. That's a great question. You swap Diggs and Jefferson right now. Is Diggs putting up I have Diggs on my number? fantasy team, so I don't want to shit on him because I need him to play. It doesn't tonight. matter. You can shit on him all you want, yeah. but do you, would I would you, take Jefferson. Would you take Jefferson yeah, over of Diggs? I would. Of course I would. I'd yeah, take Jefferson. Yeah, those. I mean, he's he's had two monster yeah. games like that. Three, three monster games. Three hundred yard games already this season. Yeah, but yeah. two of them he's gone two over of them's a buck been fifty. Ridiculous. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I love Jefferson. Yeah, I um, think uh, good for him. Good for him. <laughs> good for I him. Mean, being taken that late considering where he could have been and a lot of people doubted him because he played with joe burrow at i was LSU, gonna say you wonder why team. lsu was so good like mm -hmm. look at the top edwards four hilaire. players you got edwards hilaire justin jefferson is a top 15 fantasy running back yeah. jefferson is a top 10 wide receiver joe mm -hmm. burrow is a top 10 quarterback patrick queen is your number one linebacker in the league and they're all rookies out of lsu like think about how good that team was man mm -hmm. yeah well, they went undefeated for a reason and broke God knows how many records. But that's why. Look at this mm -hmm. talent. And it's it's transcended not only in college, because you see that a lot Look of times in college. The Bengals are actually competing. Yeah. Yeah. They're, I mean. They're rough. <laughs> I mean, they're still a bad football team. They're still the Bengals. God, how good does it feel to have a franchise quarterback if you're Cincinnati? Yeah, they're, they're looking up. And, mm -hmm. you know, Joe Mixon is Joe Mixon. You know, I, I, like, I like what they have. T. Higgins, another rookie T. wide Higgins receiver. T. Higgins pretty good. So yeah, this he has big plays, but he's not like super. AJ Green showed up from the dead yesterday. He did. He what did. do you have? Eight catches for ninety-six Something yards. Like that. Yeah. 
So, yeah, we kind of got off on a tangent because of C.D. Lamb, then we went to Justin Jefferson. <laughs> but Dallas tonight, um, the one thing I do see them with a different bit of offense is uh, they're going to run the ball a lot more without yeah. Dak, I feel. Yeah. They're going to lean on I don't know. Mike Zeke. McCarthy seems to be a big idiot. So. <laughs> How can you call McCarthy an idiot? I would take him as a Lions coach all day. It's not about that. I mean, you walk into a team with Zeke, yep. and you can't even get him the ball. I mean, I don't know. I just, I'm not a big fan of McCarthy. Really? Yeah. Why? 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 I just don't like him. <laughs> you just don't like him because he was a Packers coach? I don't like I mean, him because he was a rate, Packers right? coach. Uh, he was a great Packers coach. Right. No, no, I'm going to give him that. He won a Super Bowl, for God's sake. Yep. But I don't think – it's early in his Dallas tenure. Uh -huh. I think he's figuring it out still. I'm not going to knock on him too much. But Zeke has to have the ball. If not, fucking trade him. You're paying him way too much money. Then you can afford Dak and a bunch of other people. Yeah. I, That's just my opinion. I, I don't see why you would pay a running back that much money if he's not getting 280 carries a year. Because he's Zeke, man. you got to have him on the roster. I, I Dude's would got a tattoo on his stomach. Feed him. Feed me. Feed Isn't me. that hilarious? <laughs> and he just got it, too. Oh, no. And he looks like a uh, What are you going to do when you're 50 years old walking around with a big belly? Well, he's going to be fat and it's going to yeah. say feed me, so it'll still work. <laughs> like, it'll still be awesome. Yeah. Um. Who do you got in the game tonight? I got Dallas winning, though. You got Dallas yeah, winning? I think Dallas wins this game. Really? Yeah, yeah. After all that? After, after all that shit talking. Their defense yeah, yeah. is shit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think Kyler Murray blows up, but yeah. I still think Dallas wins it. I think Andy Dalton's just going to make less mistakes than Kyler Murray will. The Red Rocket, baby. Yeah. I'm curious to see what Andy Dalton does, because when he had a full complement of weapons in, oh, he uh, in Cincinnati, yeah. he was. He was carried that shit franchise. Oh, I wouldn't say carried, but he was a good quarterback. That managed to take a shit team in a good division to multiple playoff appearances. I always looked at him as similar to Matt Stafford. I think we compare everyone to Matt Stafford. No, no, no. I compare like four people to Matt Stafford. <laughs> Jay Cutler, yep. Andy Dalton, Phillip Rivers. Uh, that's really it off the top of my head. Yeah. And then Matt Stafford's Matt Stafford. Yeah. But like Phillip Rivers is Matt Stafford, except Phillip Rivers has made it a little further in the playoffs. Yeah. Uh, you know, and he's led teams. I mean, in my lifetime, I've seen the Lions play three playoff games. So, Yeah, that's that's big for you. <laughs> um, and two of those were under Jim Caldwell, the greatest that's coach right. of all time. <laughs> but we'll get back to that on a that's different later. day. That's a whole nother podcast. Yeah. Uh, I, I like Arizona tonight, man. I just yeah. don't think Dallas's defense can stop anybody. I, mean, after, I don't think they could stop themselves if they tried. Yeah, and that that's going to be it. I, I hope it turns out to be whoever has the ball last type game because, mm -hmm. once again, selfishly, I have Amari Cooper, and I want to see him catch at least 10 balls tonight. Yeah. But Arizona just looks good to me. Uh, the Lions. <sighs> that Lions loss derailed so much momentum. You think so? Yeah, I don't know. Kingsbury's got work to do. <laughs> I mean, if DeAndre Hopkins doesn't catch 15 balls, that offense doesn't move anywhere. That's the thing. DeHop has much to have a, run a game. major game. Keandre, uh, Kenyon Drake. Kenyon Drake. Yep. Kenyon Drake is having a not And so look out good for season. my boy Andy Isabella. Don't sleep Andy on Andy Isabella. Isabella. These are yeah, the he games. torched us. <laughs> yeah, these are the games where he sneaks in and catches yeah. like seven balls and two touchdowns. So don't Maybe sleep. Maybe I'll play him in my uh, DraftKings tonight. There you go. Your daily Make fantasy. Make him my MVP. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to take Arizona. You take Dallas. Yep. Um, over under 55 and a half. I'm going to take the over for yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm going to go over too. Yeah. So that's our look at Monday Night Football tonight. Kind of yeah. a quick little Lions recap. And now you know who's going to the World Series. That's Thank right. you, everybody, for watching this morning. I hope you enjoyed some of our new technology. Adam's over there playing on the computer. Uh, making sure that everything at the bottom of the screen is looking good. Everything at the top and the sides looks good. Uh, shout out to everybody that's watching us on Facebook Live right now. Thank you for the comments. Thank you for the shares. Uh, if you are online right now and you want to go to YouTube and like us, go ahead and do that. Instagram, Twitter, everything, at Woodward Sports. We need all the follows we can get right now. We got a big announcement coming up in about one week. Right, Adam? That's so exciting. Big Can't announcement wait. in one week. Yeah. What, look at look at you see Adam smile. Full of smile. Adam doesn't smile often, as you can tell. He's he's very I'm a calm. Lions fan, so. <laughs> yeah. And it's a Monday <laughs> after a victory, I know. baby. Oh man, everything was great yesterday. Dude, everything Food tasted better. Everything. I slept like a baby. Oh, it was such a nice day, man. Mm -hmm. I just sat on my couch mm -hmm. and watched the Lions yeah, win. I can watch the four o'clock games, the Sunday night game, and the Monday night games now like peacefully. Right. I'm not gonna be pissed off.
I did not throw my remote at the TV. That's a good thing. I did not uh, stand up and scream what the fuck once yesterday. Yep, yep. You like, I don't think you swore in your post game. I didn't have to. Yeah. Yeah. That's big for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to get better about that. You know, that first one really hurt. Like, that was authentic, man. And I... I don't want to do that every game after a loss because not every loss hurt like that yeah, one. I mean, you don't want to overreact, of course, from every loss. But God damn it, that one was a big kick in the dick. Think and about if they won that game now, where they would be. We, we would only lose, I think, to the Packers. You think so? So yeah. you think if the Lions would that be game, sitting 4-1 right yeah, now? Yeah, they'd be sitting 4-1. and one. Oof. And what would the Bears be if they lost that game? The Bears would be 1-5. One and five, one. Or 1-4, one and four, sorry. Can you believe the Bears are four and one? Or five and five one. And one? Can you believe that? That the, team is not good. I had them finishing third in the division this year, and goddamn, have the Vikings absolutely taken a big shit. What happened what the to the happened? Vikings? Their defense—it's got to be their defense because their offense still looks strong. Well, and you lose Delvin Cook. Everybody, Anson, I got to give Anson some shit for this this week because everybody was on Alexander Mattinson's like, yeah. oh, he's gonna step right nope. into Delvin Cook. Delvin Cook is Delvin Cook. Yeah. You're you're not gonna replace him with the backup. This isn't this isn't uh, what's his face, uh, like a Tony Pollard maybe backing up Zeke with that offensive line maybe two years ago. Right. That would make sense. Right. But, I mean the Vikings. Or even like San Francisco with like interchangeable backs. That's, different. That's is... just Kyle Shanahan being a fucking boss. He's the. And man. you know what? Thank you, Kyle Shanahan, for that George Kittle fourth and two play yesterday. Dude, I love George Kittle so much. Yeah. Like. Hawkinson, I guess, was working out this offseason with Kittle and Tanyan, mm -hmm. Tanyan, uh, yeah. the, the Green Bay tight end. Yeah. We need all we need Hawkinson to get on that level. I think man. that's a I think that's just our coaching. St I don't know. I don't know. I, I think Hawk. I think so much of Hawkinson. I think he has that potential. Right. I just think we don't use him that way yet. No, think Which of the plays that the they drew up for George Kittle. Like mm -hmm. that one screen where they fake the screen to the left. Yep. He, Kittle fakes like he's blocking, then leaks out, and then they throw it to him on the other side for a screen. Mm -hmm. And he gets. He almost scores a touchdown there. He scores. Yeah. He gets like 15 yards. Like those are fun, creative plays that I don't see the Lions' offense having. I don't see many teams doing that, other than maybe Kansas City. Uh, Why Rams. not though? Like this is a copycat league. If it's working for them, it'll work for us. Do you know our head coaches? I get who our head coach is, but why not? Like you said, it's just around the league. It's only two guys. There's 30 other teams that could be doing it too. Well, there's 30 other incompetent teams. <laughs> so there's only two good teams <laughs> in the NFL. No, I'm just giving them. No, shit. I just wish the Lions were more creative. Like yeah. I, honestly, I thought we would see a lot more creativity yesterday because I, I thought both coaches were coaching for their lives. Honestly, yeah. And we saw some creative plays with Agnew getting the ball in the backfield. I like getting him involved on the screens and yeah. stuff like that, reverses. But I love those gadget plays that Kansas City does. Like, watch Kansas City tonight and watch how much fun that is. And it's watch how much space. you want Eric Bieniemy to be our coach. It's just about creating space. And I think there's a few teams in the league that do such a good job of that. Yeah. It's a space game. It's like similar to basketball, really. You're trying oh. to get space on the court. No, Same get, thing in the football get your field. Speed and space. Look what they ran for for Hawkinson on fourth down. I, mean, I thought that was a great. Although play. like the previous three should have all been touchdowns, but whatever. Fourth and goal. I like the call. I, I and didn't then like run that little kick play. I didn't like passing it three times down there. I, I would have preferred they kept what running the ball. What the fuck is that fullback doing, reaching for that ball? By the way, I had Hawkinson going to my DraftKings. I was so mad. They're yeah, so lucky. Yeah, I, I don't blame that fullback though. I mean, you because the the last thing you want to do is you don't go for it, and there's a defender right behind you, and he just goes right to him. He doesn't know what the hell. He, know, he may think it's a bad throw. But, yeah, the Hawkinson play was nice. A little bit of a pick there, but whatever. I'll take the pick. No. I'll take the pick and the touchdown. Um, but, yeah, I'm excited. The Lions, this last game, if we can reinvigorated agree on, me as a fan. Yeah, if we can agree on anything, it's that we have something to look forward to. We do. Yeah. We got Atlanta coming to town. Yeah, if we just beat the awful Minnesota Vikings. For their first win of the season, yeah. though. Atlanta's Which was good. Not a good I, team. I was really scared of playing Atlanta. If they were 0-6, I would have put all my money on Atlanta next really? week. Really? Yeah, yeah. So because they won a game, Because they won, they got, they got that win out of the way, and now they'll go back to being shit. <laughs> That's my logic. They got Julio Jones back. <laughs> Julio he... Jones is a fucking boss. That guy is Good a for monster, him. man. What is he, 32, 33 now? Him and A.J. Green are the same age, Jeez. right? They came out the same year, and Julio and A.J. aren't even the same person. Yeah, I'm going to show love to Julio because he won me a lot of money on drafting. Yeah, season. Julio, um, I hope he doesn't have a big game next week, but you know him and Ridley are coming to town. Yeah. It's going to be a big game for them. Yeah, Matt Patricia's got to scheme up something for that. 
Put pressure on Matt Ryan. That is the key. You want to shut down Julio. You want to shut down Ridley. You put pressure on the quarterback. Bring extra defenders every single play. Like that. Why do you think Aaron Rodgers looked so out of sorts yesterday? Mm -hmm. And that's Aaron Rodgers. Imagine what we could do to Matt Ryan. I mean, Tom Brady, when he was with the Patriots in his prime, the the game plan essentially was put pressure on Tom Brady. He can't beat you. I mean, it's just how it is in the NFL. If you put pressure on a quarterback, they got to, those easy throws don't become easy anymore. They become, you know, more difficult throws. And that's all you can do. It's like in basketball. Like you can't stop a superstar from going off, but you can limit them and make him, make it hard for him. Well, and if they're feeling that the whole game, even when you don't get pressure, you're going to speed up the clock in their head. And that, that's the point of football. Constantly keep pressure on your opponents in every single way, whether it's on the scoreboard, whether it's running the ball, whether it's with your wide receivers, putting pressure on the free safety and the safety, what like football is about constant pressure and making the other opponent break. That's what the Lions did yesterday. They kept the constant pressure on. I'm very proud of them for doing that. So uh, go Lions. Happy Monday. And we are here to celebrate. That's what we're going to be doing here at Woodward Sports all day. We're going to celebrate. I may go stand on Woodward naked later. All right. I'll join you. (laughs) All right. Let's do it. (laughs) Uh, Thanks for watching. And uh, make sure you like us everywhere you see Woodward Sports. Like I said, big announcement coming uh, in about one week. Big announcement in one week. So thanks for watching.